Today, let's make a bow perfect for your pet's collar. Welcome I do sewing and DIY related content and today we are making a bow perfect for your pet's collar. So for this I am going to be using this satin material. I think it's going to be really fun. I also think this could be a great idea if you are getting married or engaged soon and want to make a really fancy little thing for your pup. So for this you are going to need two pieces of rectangular fabric that are 4 inches by 20 inches. This is going to be our main bow component. Once you have those two rectangles cut out, then we are going to need one additional rectangle that will be the middle of our bow. So for this one, I made this be about three inches by six inches. So again, just another rectangle. We are gonna need one more, but we'll get into that a little bit later. Once you have your long rectangles, we are going to be folding them with right sides together. So one at a time, folding this up, so sort of hot dog style or similar to how you would a scrunchie. And then we are going to be pinning this at both the short sides as well as the whole long side. Now the big thing about this is we are actually sewing it so that we will be sewing up one of the short ends, going to about the middle of this long end, leaving a gap. So we are not going to be sewing in there. And then we'll do the exact same on the other side where we're going to sew up the rest of it and then that other short edge. So leaving a gap in the middle and this is going to allow us to turn it. So now I'm going to repeat these exact same steps for this other long rectangle that I have. And then again with this one, we're going to be leaving that gap in the center. So we are not going to be sewing there. This is going to allow us to turn them when it comes to the later steps. Now for that other small rectangle that we had cut out, what we're going to be doing is making sure we know the right side and wrong side. So right side facing down, we are going to be folding the long edges about a quarter of an inch in on themselves. So as you can see, I'm just folding it in about a quarter of an inch and then I will clip or press depending on the type of fabric you're using. And so this is just going to hold it in place. Now for the satin, I am using quilting clips as sometimes the pins can snag it a little bit. So it really just depends on what type of fabric you're using. So now I'm repeating this for that other long edge and we are just going to be sewing both of those up to kind of keep those raw edges inside of our little bow. So now I'm just gonna go to my sewing machine and take a straight stitch for both of those long edges. So this is very pretty simple to do. Be sure you are back stitching at the beginning and end to keep that nice and secure stitch and then repeating that for the second side. Once you have both those sewn up, one of the short edges, you are then going to fold that in as well. So just taking a quarter inch of folding that fabric over, then you can clip it, and then you're just going to be taking a straight seam. You do not need to worry about that fourth edge as we are going to be covering that up when it comes time to putting our bow together for assembly. So you only need to do this step for one of those short edges. Once you have that complete, you can then trim any extra threads that you have on that, but this portion is now be done and you can move over to those bigger rectangles that we pinned up earlier to take that seam. So we're gonna be sewing one of those short edges, putting our needle down into our fabric and then pivoting our fabric 90 degrees. And then we will just continue on with that long edge. Now for the long edge, be sure that wherever you had marked for where you're gonna be turning this and leaving that gap that you stop backstitch at that point and then stop the seam, clip it up and then you will be continuing on. So we just wanna be sure that we are leaving this nice gap so that we're able to turn this right side out. So I left about a two and a half inch gap and then I just continued my way sewing this long rectangle. Once you have this done, you can then repeat this for your second rectangle and then trim up any of those extra little pieces of threads or any of the corners for the fabric so that it's very easy to turn. Then we're just gonna be turning these right side out. Now it's time for us to work on the portion that will be attached to the collar. So you're gonna be cutting out two rectangles that are two inches by six inches, as well as cutting out two pieces of elastic. Now I did two inch elastic that would fit best on my dog's collar. If you have a bigger collar though, you may wanna increase the width for both those rectangles as well as your elastic. I'm then going to be putting my fabric, so with the right side facing up, and then adding my elastic, so about an inch and a half away from either edge, and then putting that second rectangle with the right side facing down, and then pinning or clipping all of this up. So essentially making a little fabric sandwich where we have the fabric and then our elastic and then the other piece of fabric, and I'm gonna be sewing all the way around, but leaving about a two inch gap at either the top or the bottom. So just going all the way around, being sure that I leave that two inch gap so then I'm able to turn this right side out as well. Now for this, I use half inch elastic and I thought that that was a really good size. You could definitely play with that or make it bigger or smaller depending on your dog's needs as well as depending on how much you're gonna be using this. You wanna make sure that it's like very secure. 
Once I had that done, I then went down and ironed those two longer rectangles as well as that one shorter rectangle. The rectangle that has the elastic on it, I did not do any ironing with that. And now it's just time to hand sew everything closed. So this pattern itself, you could have actually machine sewed these as well if you're more comfortable with that. I just decided to go through and hand sew all of those little openings. You're really not gonna be seeing these too much, so you could do more of a whip stitch if you would like. I opted to do a ladder stitch so that it was a nice invisible stitch all the way through, just to give it a really nice and clean and neat feel. Once you have all of these hand sewn up or machine sewed, it will then be time to start putting our bow together. So the only thing that I will say is that the portion that will be going on the collar you may be able to see that opening. So for this, you know, you may really want to think about doing some sort of invisible stitch just so that the opening isn't as obvious that it was hand sewn up. Now for the bow construction, we have our two rectangle pieces. I am just going to be folding them over. So we see that we have the folded edge and then this edge that has those two loops. And for one of them, I'm going to be folding it so that the folded edge is to the left and the other, the folded edge is to the right. So this is going to give us our main bow component. I am then going to put them on top of each other and then just sort of stagger them so that both of those folded components are at the top and then the little edges are at the bottom. Now I'm going to be taking that smaller rectangle that we did three of those edges on and just wrapping this around the middle of the bow. So you can kind of adjust this however you would like to see where it fits best for you. If you want to make it tighter or if you want to have it be a looser bow, this is really up to a personal preference and how you would like it to look like. I thought that this looked really cute and really fun for it. So now it's just time for us to hand sew that little portion in the middle closed. So to hand sew this closed, what we're gonna be doing is sewing it up on the back. So making sure that you can't see any of the raw edges. So my raw edge for this fabric is actually in the middle. And then I'm just gonna be going through and hand sewing it. Now for this back portion, nobody's actually gonna be seeing this. So you could do whatever type of stitch you would like. I think you could also probably get away with fabric glue if you wanted, depending on the sturdiness of your material. Once you have it all sewn up though, I would say the one thing is to be cautious that you're not sewing through all of the layers and you're able to see the seams on the front. But once you have it sewn up, you can then just sort of adjust this however you would like. If you want the edges to kind of go in on themselves or if you want it to stay exactly how it is, both are completely fine. So now we are coming up to the final step and that is attaching the bow to that collar component. So for this, you're just going to top stitch it at both the top of the collar component as well as the bottom. So for that, I did end up trying to do more of an invisible stitch since you may be able to see it slightly. Once you have it attached on, technically it's complete. If you would like to do any little hand tacking so that your bow actually kind of looks more like a bow or you can see the little loops of the bow, you could definitely do that. Hand tacking is more of just going through and just adding little hand stitches so that the fabric is staying exactly in place for how you would like it. This is completely an optional step though. You do not need to do this. The bow looks cute regardless and it's really up to your personal preference. Once that's done though, you can then just attach this to your dog's collar by sliding it in place using that little elastic loops on the back. And you now have a really cute and fun dog bow. Perfect for any occasion, for every day, for weddings, for birthdays, really whatever you would like. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe and let me know what you want to see next. Thanks for watching.